I might stop there because the food's here. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. This looks really I'll slide good. Slide this over. Stephen Sully from the Stephen Sully Study. We're here for a second interview with uh, Coop DC. And while this guy's got a wealth of knowledge, it only made sense to get him on the second part. There's a documentary called The Game Changers, which I think is spoken about a lot at the moment. Just wanted to see his take on it and also how he's developed his own plant-based diet and routine over the last couple of months and over the last year or so. I'm really looking forward to trying this restaurant as well. I heard it's amazing. It's one of the only places that Coop says that he can go to without worrying about recipes and also about what's actually in the food, whether it has any animal products in it or not. It's called Plant Hub. It's in Hackney, very friendly. Service is, I can tell, already going to be impeccable uh, and the food already looks great. Uh, be happy, never content and definitely leave a review. Uh, leave a comment and tell me your thoughts and feelings towards maybe the, the, some of the food episodes, wellness, training, and uh, more specifically, Coop DC. Thank you. I um, first glance of the of the menu looks really really cool. I'm a massive massive fan of truffle truffle mushrooms here, which is looks really really cool. Uh, aubergine in some tomato sauce with truffle cashew uh, crumbs and a salad. Yeah, it looks real nice. I'm looking forward to trying. I've got to be honest, the thing that, um, I don't know why I'm a bit surprised of, and it's not like I don't know this, but I saw uh, there's wine and alcohol on the menu. And uh, sometimes I, I feel that um, like vegans, it's not that they don't drink it, but it's just for some reason, I just didn't register like plant-based and having alcohol will go together. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to trying some of this stuff. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be nice. Long time, bro. Hmm. Took me a long time yeah, just to get here. Yeah, good. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah. Looking well, mate. Congratulations again. Thank you, thank you, mate. Yeah. What sort of stands out for you? On. Um, Mushroom truffle, um, that, the baked aubergine. That okay. looks like that looks like the thing. On the small plates, the yeah. On the small plates, probably the fava bean miso and the baked portobello mushroom broth. So I get their um, their attention. Yeah. Because the label's going to come back. Training good, business good? Training's good, business is going well. So in it, like, obviously days seem like they're getting shorter, but does, yeah. does that not matter? You're just training dark? No, because I, I, yeah, it, it's, it does matter to me it's because I like to wake up and see some sunshine yeah. and hear the birds chirping. Um, I like to see daylight. It just feels like it's a very long night, you know? Mm. Um, but I, I typically... Ready when you are. Oh, um. I train from 6 a.m. till 12 p.m. And then I get home, because then I've got online consultations, <coughs> discussing either training or health, resolving people's health issues from people from New York, Ghana, Nigeria, everyone from like West Africa, because they're on the same type of time, um, on the time, time schedule, which is like five hours behind. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, Perfect. I'm gonna let this yeah. man, uh, I think we're going to go for the fava bean miso. Perfect. Your spicy roasted peppers. I'm afraid that's the one thing on the menu I don't have. Really? Yeah. Uh, if you want any advice, the beetroot gets amazing feedback and the broccoli is very good as well. Uh, I did or maybe some bread with the cheese or something like that. Is it gluten free, the bread? Everything's gluten free, vegan and organic. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So which one did you say? This, the cheeses? The cheeses, yeah. They kind of go well with the bread. Oh yeah, so we can I do think it on like I'm a platter. Right? Yes, all right. Yeah, yeah, we'll go for that one. We're gonna go for the bread and the cheese. Yep, Perfect. and 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 then this one here, like and you just true? yeah, the one that you recommended. Okay. Could I get a bottle of still water? A bottle of still water. Okay. How about that? Uh, that is fine. I have a feeling I've only got the large bottles. Is that okay? That's, That's fine. fine. Perfect. Cool. Okay. We'll hold on to at least on one to of this. these. So yeah. I've just got the bread, the cheese, and the beetroot for now. Yes. And whenever you're ready, you make sure it's anything else. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Wait, so wait. 4 a.m. Sorry, 4 a.m. I do <coughs> consultations, health, 
related or training related with people from Australia. 6 a.m. I'm training. 12 to 1 or 12 to 5 p.m. I'm normally dealing with people from New York, West Africa um, and Florida. Like just everyone from the East Coast. And then come 5 p.m. onwards up until about 7 or 8. Right. 5 to 7 or 8 p.m. I'll be working with people from like California, Canada, etc. So wow. that's like all health and training related. So, so just like how long do you normally need to sleep, would you say? This is my trick. If I don't look at the time, my body doesn't calculate how many hours it slept. So as long as I get longer than three hours, I feel completely the same as if I slept for eight hours. There's literally no difference in how I feel when I rise out of bed. Um, but I feel like five hours to six hours is good enough for me. But when you do things like water fasting, you'll find that during a water fast, you don't have to sleep, you don't sleep long. Because um, I think, I, I've, I've, uh, I mentioned I, I follow someone else who I speak to quite a lot, a guy called Tyson from Alkaline Human, Human, I think, or is it Humanism? Either or, and um, what he says to me, which makes a lot of sense, and I've seen him post it, and I think you might have done something similar, which is, if your body's not inflamed mm -hmm. because you're eating proper foods, mm -hmm. raw plant-based stuff, and you're drinking a lot of water, mm. your body's not fighting inflammation, therefore you don't need to go to sleep as long. Mm. Is that is that kind of true? Yeah, there's there's some truth element behind it. Um, what I, the main thing to do with how much sleep you need boils down to how hard your body's working whilst you're sleeping. Right. The reason why we use the term fast asleep, or who's going fast asleep, is because one's supposed to be in a fasted state before they fall to sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, you break fast, right? Wow. So if your body doesn't have to deal with metabolizing the food, breaking it down, absorption, removing of waste, like fighting off any, I don't know, like harmful um, allergen triggering proteins, for instance, then your body's at a rested state. Right. So you'll find that the less you're eating in the evening, the well rested you become. Your body starts producing hormones that allow you to have a deeper sleep. And then when you wake up, you actually feel rejuvenated. Good. So when you do water fast, you'll find a lot of people will water fast and they would only be sleeping between three to four hours. And that's good enough. But everyone wants to fight that sleep. I'm like, don't fight it, get up, read a book, do something, meditate. Do whatever else you need to do that you wouldn't normally do at that time. You just get up and do it. It's good. Yeah, so the less your body is under a state of stress, the better you sleep. Yeah. I've, I've noticed myself, like, I can function on five hours Yeah. pretty well. I can get up early, train really hard, have a full day, do what I need to do. And I could do that probably three days in a row. Mm -hmm. And that only works if I'm eating and drinking very clean. Yes. I think after three days low, I suddenly start feeling a little bit tired, a little bit fatigued. Yeah. Uh, would you say that's partly down to like just testing my body and see what worked for me? Or do mm. you think I could probably push it a little bit further? Do you know what? It might be brought down to your... Do you know what I normally say? is follow your body's lead. If you're tired and your body's tired and your mind's telling you to go up and do something extra, Nine times out of ten, your body's right. Yeah. <laughs> but we have this thing where we feel like whatever our minds tell us to do, we should get up and do it. Like I'm full, but that piece of cake is looking like I can have yeah. another one. Yeah. Let me just have it. But your body's already giving you the signals that you've had enough. That's the problem. When you're tired, you want to go to sleep, your eyes are shutting, but you've still got your phone and you're just reaching yeah, yeah. just to get a few more scrolls and a few more likes, you know, whatever it is that you're doing or just a little bit more research, I don't know. But that's you going against your body's natural calling for, to go to bed. Like your melatonin's at its highest point, it wants you to go to sleep, it wants you to stay in sync yeah. with your circadian rhythm. But we're taking it out of that sink is because we want to stay up for God knows what. Crazy. I think it's a good part to uh, reintroduce 
my next guest then, Coop. <laughs> um, we're at a restaurant called Plant Hub, uh, mm. and already, like the energy in here is great, uh, the people are great, um, service is no doubt going to be great, and, and more importantly, the, the food is going to be fantastic. The food is amazing. So, how long have you been coming here for? Literally, I think they opened this year, so I've only ever came here on four occasions. Okay. But what I liked about their food is that <coughs> majority of their food, <coughs> all their food is organic. It's gluten free, but then also they source their food from particular um, like farmers or farmers markets. So what's not in season would make the menu adapt. And they don't try to keep the things the same by going to Whole Foods or Planet Organic where they would ship those foods from Spain or wherever to maintain their menu, they would just shift their menu. So I'd like to come here because it's always a pleasant surprise, mm. but also they produce a lot of their own food, so they will press their own oil. They either they're not making their own cheese. They know somebody that makes their cheese, and then they have that in, and then that's all. You'll you'll get a chance to taste some of yeah, the cheese. Yeah, can't wait. We've just ordered um, some stuff. What I mean, what did we order? You, we remember? ordered the cheeses. So it comes with. Um, oh, here you go. Perfect. Here we are. Yeah, so we've got the fava bean focaccia, smoky chocolate cheese. Uh, these all made with cashews, Italian herbs, and then. Cashew, cashew. That looks okay. amazing. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah, so last time when we were doing the uh, the podcast, we trained together, which was fantastic. It was just before my fight. Mm. And then I think you had a client like not so long after. So we, so the podcast that we've done was great. Yeah. I listened to it again this morning and mm -hmm. I've had a lot of good feedback from it. But it was only right that we <clears throat> carry on the conversation because you're well for knowledge and I learned a lot from you. Yeah. And I'm not just saying it, I got really inspired by some of your, your stuff. Um, I was just saying before we were recording that I feel like plant-based, vegan, you know, all this, the, the, the big to topic around food at the moment is, is very much a hype and it's very much on trend. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people saying a lot of good things about it, a lot of people saying opposing things, and I'm, I like to be an open-minded individual. Mm -hmm. The one thing that's been on TV a lot, or broadcasted a lot on Netflix, which is one of the top watch documentaries is The Game Changers. Mm. Now at the time, you and I had not both watched it. Yeah. I heard about it, I think you were just told even that day about mm. it. And since then I've watched it about three or four times and you've watched it. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you about it really. Speak to me. So, um, first of all, I thought it was put, put together very well. As someone who's not as educated as you in, mm -hmm. in food, wellness, nutrition and stuff, just from a pure entertainment point of view, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Hence why I watched it three or four times. Mm -hmm. um, from that aspect, did you think it was entertaining? Yeah, I did. I, what I found great about it is that <coughs> they use people, inspirational, inspiring athletes. I think, that makes, I think that makes a big difference because you can talk to a lot of average people, um, just people that just get on with their life who train the way that they train, eat the way that they eat, and they speak about the benefits that they've gone through. But most people will look at other top athletes or people that's at the top of their game and think, well, these people aren't vegan, they're eating meat. So at the end of the day, they're more inspiring to me because they're the ones that's doing it. But when you've got someone that's the world's strongest man who's a vegan, <coughs> and when you've got a 40-year-old cyclist that's winning all of her races, that becomes more goals, yeah. yeah that, that becomes more inspiring it's because like oh shit it yeah. can actually be done yeah so it's taken away from let's say the common people to people that's more popular in the entertainment industry that people can look up to and say well okay well if that's the case then i want to try this yeah. and i feel like that a lot of people that's watched it has decided to try going vegan almost more people have tried going vegan then what the health. Like loads of people watch what the health and was like, now nah, I'm done. I feel like that what the health that turned a few pages for a lot of people. I haven't actually watched that. You is it watch more that. is it more because <clears throat> what I'm worried about, as I mentioned earlier, is the animal kind of graphics where they yeah. get really tortured or they get hurt and stuff, and that plays in my mind for a long time. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Because you asked me the same question two or three years ago, and I'll be like, yeah, it doesn't bother me. For some reason, over the last few years, I'm more and more conscious about the animal welfare. Yeah. So, is there more 
the graphics of that? No, there's, it? there's, it's not graphic at all. Okay. It's just stating facts, facts after facts. And then you have the guy, the, the narrator, who's basically just, all he's doing is just trying to fit all the pieces to the puzzle. And he's just like, okay, well, <coughs> these foods, he's looking on the World Health, World Health Organization website, and he's looking at what they're talking about in regards of what's healthy and what's not. And he's just comparing the facts. He's comparing certain studies to their um, their instructions of how we should be eating, and it doesn't match up. And then he's challenging the sponsors of the people that are spon- the, the meat industries that are sponsoring the cancer research team. And on the cancer research pages, they're, they're encouraging people to consume more red meat. And it's like, yeah, but we can already see that bacon or sausages are number one carcinogen. And that means they're in the same um, category, category one, as cigarettes and asbestos. So giving your child a, uh, a, a, a sausage to eat is equivalent to giving your child a cigarette. So why would they then put having sausages or having pork or bacon on their list of foods to eat? Wow. So yeah. I definitely need to see that one. These are things that me and my friends had looked up, researched like five years ago. When people watch what they have, they start sending it back to me being like, oh, look at this. And it's like, yeah, remember when I was speaking about that? Mm -hmm. To the point I got bored about speaking about it. And it is what it is. I mean, people take on information and knowledge at the time that they thought. Thank you very much. I'm actually going to try some of this. (laughs) People take on the information and knowledge at the time that's suitable for them. Yeah. Sometimes it's just not the right time for a person to receive that information. If I spoke to you about what we're speaking about five years ago, it wouldn't have been for you. I might have planted the seed a little bit earlier, yeah. but it just might not have been for you. Mm. When my eldest brother used to talk to me about wisdom and, and let's say, um, the banking industry, for instance, just used to try and sit me down and be like, listen, money isn't the isn't all you need to be chasing after. I wasn't ready for that, but I used to listen to it. When I was ready for it, I remember doing my research, going through my research, I started remembering certain sentences and certain lines that my brother would have told me at the time. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, What I liked about Game Changers is a couple of things that stood out for me, but there was one where three athletes, One had a chicken burrito, one had a bean, mm. who was already vegan, one had a beef, took all their bloods. Next time they all had bean ones mm. and they put their blood into like this, I don't know what you call it, but a machine which separated the blood from the plasma. Yep. And if the plasma remained murky yeah. or cloudy, cloudy, that would have uh, suggested that the fat particles are still in there, which is from the, from the meat, yeah. which can, and over time, that will compound and lead to blockages, which could also lead to cancers and all that kind of stuff. And that was just so evident, that was just so clear to me, that mm. that made so much sense. And I thought to myself, look, your body could probably deal with some fishes and some meats. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying if you ate one, you're gonna die. Yeah. But it's a compound effect, if you eat in the morning, if you eat in the afternoon, if you eat in the evening, and you repeat that for mm. days, weeks, months, and years, decades, mm. you're asking for a problem. If I have one cigarette tonight, mm-hmm. I don't smoke by the way, but if I did, <laughs> I ain't gonna die. Yeah. But if I've done it for five years, there's a chance I could develop some serious illness. And that's kind of how I see it. Yeah. I don't know if if you would support that, or there's a no, little bit more. Of course I would support that. That's yeah. just, all they're doing is just stating facts. Um, I've helped a lot of people, a lot of young men, I'm going to keep on trying yeah, some of this, do, yeah? Actually, tell me, what do you think of that? That was nice. Yeah. Uh, this bread is really, it's like moist, it's like a cake. Soft, isn't it? Uh, this is this is cashew, I'm yeah. not sure what she said that I is. I can't remember what she said that was. But um, I'm going about to try that now, but that was really nice. Um, yeah, I was saying that um, I've worked with a lot of young males who... That's lovely. Yeah? Mm. I'm going to dig in there in a minute. Really, really good. Um, with penile dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, can't hold an erection as long as they would like to. Can't hold it, ne- forget holding it, can't even get it as hard as they would like to. Yeah. Right? And. That's blockages, isn't it? Yeah. 
the answers was right there. It, sh it shows most people are not eating three meals a day. Some people eat four or five meals a day with snacks in between, especially if they've got a goal that they're trying to achieve in the, in the field of bodyweight training. <clears throat> I mean, not bodyweight training, like bodybuilding. So someone's going to the gym four, four times a week, eating four meals a day, snacks in between. I used to eat like that. Yeah. A lot, it was meat based, very, very heavy. And I thought this is what I needed. It just felt right. I never had any of those issues, but everybody deals with their, their body, their body deals with these issues differently. Yeah. One person may have acne, another person may have erectile dysfunction, another person may have um, inflammation. Everybody's going to be different. Colitis, whatever the situation is going to be. Appendicitis, some people have to have an operation to get their appendix removed. Yeah, this is all due to heavy meat consumption. Yeah. So on the game changers, um, the two questions I want to ask, quite broad ones, or yeah. well, you're going to probably probably have a broad answer, which is, what bits you stood out to you, which were, yep, yeah, that's that's factual, or I believe that to be true, or I think that's really really compelling stuff, or, and then the other question is, what parts of it would you challenge, or you think no, nah, that wasn't right, or 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 is it all right? Do you know when I watched it, I didn't watch it in with with an evil eye to pick at it and say, well, what's this and what's that? I feel like if I would have came across anything at the time, I feel like I would have picked up on it and been like, hmm, that seems a bit odd. But to me, because I've been living like this for a long time, because I've helped so many people in their issues and their health issues, majority, everything to me just sounded on point. There was, um, I, I mentioned Joe Rogan, someone I listen to a yeah. lot, and I do I do rate him. Uh, I think he has some really interesting guests, because he's from the fight background. I like a lot of his guests as well, mm -hmm. boxers, MMA fighters. There's one guy on there, I don't know if I'm quoting his name right, Chris Kessler, I don't know if you can look it up, but actually Chris, uh, find out his name, but mm. guy spoke really well, very articulate, used to be a vegan. He actually said he was a plant-based raw, he, he transitioned through a lot of them. Again, I don't know how true it is, mm -hmm. but he's, he come across like he was genuine. And he started challenging points on it. Yeah. He actually said how well done the film was, but he said it's all about context. Mm -hmm. He said a lot of these people are athletes, so that it makes you feel like, you know, if athletes are doing it, then it must be the right thing. But what he said, which kind of made me think, um, yeah, I see your point. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, you're obviously going to perform better because when you make a transition from the westernized diet, which is there's a boxer on there called, I um, can't remember his first name, B Jennings, down at a haymaker gym, quite a big guy, heavyweight, quite a good boxer, full clips go actually. His typical Western diet was like KFC chicken, Popeyes. So they're obviously fried food, fast food, uh, lots of meats. And the, so when he came out of that, he went to plant-based, it's more clean. And they're saying, it's not necessarily plant-based that's helped him, because he's now eating clean. Rather than going from like sugar sorts and fast food, which is fried, he's made that transition, so of course things are gonna get better. Mm -hmm. There was an element which I actually agreed there, mm -hmm. because if you if you come away from sugars and stuff, you're gonna feel better and perform better. Mm -hmm. But do you ever get that? And then, I'm not trying to be devil, devil's advocate with you here, but I'm just trying to like, I always try to like to see both sides of the coin. Yeah. Um, Mate, if you're coming from junk food, I'm Someone that's vegan eats junk food, vegan foods. Yeah. If they go back to a whole food, plant-based food diet, then they're going to feel incredibly better. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going from a meat-based diet, from junk food to just a cleaner version of it, exempting the fried foods, exempting fast food in general, you're going to feel better. Yeah. Because the majority of that food is crap. Like, where is that food coming from? So yeah, he's correct. Yeah, yeah, I don't disagree with what he's saying. Yeah, and he was trying to trying to say the reason why people are achieving such great things is because I don't, I don't think he was saying for all the athletes, but I'm yeah. just saying generally speaking, that's why they see a huge performance. But I mean, if you went from junk food meat eating, like, and then went to clean meat eating, you're going to feel better than you was when you was in the junk. Then you went to um, junk food vegan, you might feel a little bit better. Uh, it might feel a little bit lighter, but then you went from there to whole food plant-based, 
you're gonna feel amazing. Yeah. Um, it's all about how, so where do you want to, how far do you want this transition to go? Yeah. And um, the, the thing that I loved as well is about your arteries. Yeah. About the more inflamed it is, uh, they spoke about other things, but basically the, the walls the, of the, the of they the come thicker and yeah. they become condensed, and that's why you end up having, you know, the blockages, the strokes, yeah. the heart attacks, the heart diseases, maybe even cancers. Atheromas is called. That that for me was one of the winning statements ever, and that's yeah. why I'm personally remaining on this journey of. Mm -hmm. I know I keep justifying it, but during the week, yeah. plant based, and yeah. I have a bit of fish occasionally, but yeah. I pick and choose my battles yeah. uh, on the weekend, mm -hmm. and I, that's what I revert to. Um, what you were saying earlier, I wanted to interject, but you, 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 were, you, were, you, were, you were in a flow, and I was, yeah. was taking lots of notes from it, but I had a fight mm. shortly mm. after, in boxing fight, that me and you trained and had the podcast. And I had a lot of people going, well, you haven't fought for six years, you're older, mm. you're going onto a plant-based predominantly, you, you know, you're going to fight people younger, you're going to go on this, this, back on this boxing league, which is at a higher level, yeah. <clears throat> you're going to fight someone a lot more active and stuff, it's not going to work. I actually had a few people say that, even family members say that. Yeah. And in myself, I had to make sure that I'd done everything <laughs> I could to win because yeah. I didn't want to, I know what would have happened, if I would have lost, people would have gone, should have eaten meat. I know yeah. it, I can hear it now. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I was predominantly on soups. Yeah. Uh, cold presses in the morning, which I sent you my recipe. Yeah. And you even said to me, wow, that's a lot. I had um, vegetable soup or lentil soup mm -hmm. with spinach and stuff. Um, mm. And it was also a bowl of fruit. I had that three times mm. and then that was it. And I got to tell you, I had loads of energy. Yeah. So it, it's bollocks that when people tell you, you need big stuffy foods in order to have the energy yeah. to get your, your calories up, Yeah, it's, it's not the case. <laughs> and I'm, I, I've experienced that firsthand. It's so funny it's because when people start talking about calories, it's like, well, you can get lots of calories from loads of different types of food. Yeah. You know, it's that <clears throat> you can have a cake that can give you the same calories as a whole meal, which could be just a small cake, you know? Like your body doesn't, it's not gonna distinguish where you're getting your calories from where we will distinguish where you're getting the nutrients from. But calorie count, this is why calorie counting doesn't work. It's because it's like, you can end up starving yourself from counting calories. And that's the end, at the end of the day, you're bringing your body to a deficit, which is just gonna think, which is your body just adapts to it. Yeah. And then eventually the reason why people, when they go on these, these diets, where they were at a calorie deficit, it always fails in the end. The moment that they just, once their body adapts to it, so they go and drop down from 2,000 calories to 1,500 calories, kids start losing a bit of weight, etc. Et your body catches up with that, and then you all of a sudden, people start gaining weight again at that level of calories that they're consuming. Because, yeah, it boils down to how much you're working out in comparison to how much food you're taking in. But at the end of the day, like I said, when we were messaging each other, how much energy is your body putting in to breaking down this food? You know, if your body puts, if you're eating your meal and then you end up in a food coma, that's not good. That's not healthy. You're supposed to feel energized after you finish eating, not yeah. slump. I have to say, every time I uh, have a soup at work, um, I do get it from Whole Foods. Mm. And it's only because, well, one, I, it's, it's not microwaved. Yeah. So obviously I make sure that's a, that's a must. Mm. And the other thing, it, it's always fresh, it's always there, and there's a lot of variety. Yeah. But every time I have it, I go straight back to where I've got energy. I remember when I used to go for a steak lunch with chips and like some veg, I was wiped out for hours. <laughs> like literally, I could not do anything. Yeah. And it literally would put me in that food coma. And I yeah. think so many people go through that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, game changers and going back to that. Um, is there anything else that stood out from it that you thought was really, really, you know really cool? What I thought was really good is when they had, when they done a test on the three young guys, were they just students? On their, on how how many erections they have during the night? How no, long? They, no, they were uh, American footballers. Oh, was they? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Then I must have been partially watching. <laughs> I think I was partially watching. Um, but that was a great test because that was something that we would, me and my friends, may speak about in passing, but it wasn't a thing that we would say, okay, well, this is 
we kind of said we, we put it down to our diet yeah right? yeah but it wasn't like yeah i don't know it's, it's an odd one to think because there was no test on it yeah but all of us that was on a plant-based diet all knew that there's no guy <laughs> that would want their missus to end up being with someone that's plant-based because they wouldn't want to go back because our energy our levels of energy was way higher than it had ever been on a meat-based diet yeah i knew i had even more stamina if we're talking about what we're doing in, at night time with our partners so like but that was just a conversation amongst us and of course for us we knew that if there's less fat in your blood then more blood flow can get to your penis but i'm very that made me happy to see that they put that test and done it in the way that well, they so done many it. men would be afraid to even go through that test or even have that conversation yeah. because it's probably i mean i don't know the statistics and thankfully i don't have a problem in that yeah. in that department but there must be a lot of men that actually go for it but won't ever talk about it mm -hmm. because they feel like you know i'm an alpha male i can't yeah. i can't talk about that sort of stuff um and i'm glad they hit hit that home because it's a clear demonstration that if you're consuming the wrong stuff too much things yes. ain't gonna ain't gonna ain't gonna work and like i said i've dealt with many people with issues in that area and i'll tell them exactly those issues but it was just good to see it clear up, like cleared up right there it's just like this is the issues that people are dealing with yeah if you put two and two together you've got the first test to do with how much how cloudy the blood is and you've got another test to show you you're eating vegan just over 24 hours this is the difference that you're getting yeah just in your night sleep yeah. so imagine if there was aroused by a woman what would, what would the test be showing them? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I thought that was a great, a great um, examination. So, um, right, so plant-based, okay. Is it right that not actually all plants low, which some people may perceive as healthy, are actually good for the human body? i tell you why, obviously now I'm on this journey, I'm even getting my mum every so often throwing little things at me going, well, did you know this isn't that good for you? Look at this study. And I think it's like the nightshade. Yeah. And also spinach, I've heard. Which spinach is like a bit, Which is a bit like modified over years. You know, someone was telling me something about it. Mm. But nightshade, so like certain plants will release certain chemicals once released by, once consumed by people or animals because it's a basically them defending themselves to mm -hmm. get you to stop eating them. Yeah. How true is that? It's true. So people that are suffering from any form of inflammation or has arthritis. This is lovely, by the way. Is it? Really good. You've got to I'm tuck gonna in. I'm going to jump in there. Um, inflammation, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, any word with the word, any name with the word itis in it just means inflammation. That's what it is. And if you have inflammation, you consume any nightshade foods. Nightshade foods are white potatoes, peppers, um, goji berries, tobacco. Um, goji berries not good? I mean, it's a nightshade. If you're not having any issues, if you're not having any inflammation issues, any issues with inflammation, it's, it's your call if you want to eat it or not. Mushrooms? I really, no, mushrooms are fine. They're not part of the nightshade family. And um, what else is there? Eggplant. Yeah. And um, majority of the, the vegetables that have a little green hat on the top of them come from the nightshade family. So yeah, they do have certain properties that are used to defend itself and cause an animal or a human to stop eating it by causing inflammation or aiding to any form of inflammation. Because a lot of foods that we consume causes inflammation, but that would help boost that process up and help it to stay there even longer. <coughs> so yeah, there is certain foods that we're not really supposed to, supposed to be indulging in as much as we do. Yeah. Like potatoes, for instance, we smash potatoes. Oh mate, it's just like... Baked potatoes, jacket potatoes, crisp, like it's in a lot, potato starch. Well, in Game Changers, and I think you touched on it last time, that, um, how can I word this? The powers that be rely on us becoming ill. Mm -hmm. And we all know fruit is good for you, but they've taken your concentration off of fruit and they've fed us starches. Mm -hmm. And obviously too much starch, this is, there's a place for them of course, but too much of it, fried, you know, the, the chips, you mm -hmm. know, crisps, you know, mashed potato and all that kind of stuff, eventually makes you sick. 
Um, yeah, so I, I know f- first hand the Western diet, most things that you order, mm. fish and chips, steak and chips, pie and chips, there's always, you know, there's always some kind of form of chips out. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people convince themselves because it is a potato and because it's part of the plant based family, yeah. that it's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, just reiterating again, if you were to keep on consuming it, I mean, what would kind of. I think everybody's happen? body's different, everybody's body has a different reaction. So me and you can be sitting down smashing pizzas all day long. Yeah. But what may happen to you won't happen to me. And I have to tell all of my clients that all the time. I said, just because your friends sat there and ate it with you, they may, they may be suffering in silence, but they don't know that it's relatable to their food that yeah. they ordered yeah. and that they're eating. So where you may be suffering with acne, for instance, that might not be my issue. My issue might be bloating or constipation. But I'm not gonna tell you, oh, I'm constipated. That might be something I might just deal with. A couple of hours later, I'm gonna be at home by myself. You're gonna be doing your own thing, and I'm gonna be like, yeah. doesn't really sit well. Stupid me, not listening to my body, I still go and have something extra to eat. Yeah. You know, thinking that's gonna resolve the issue, and it doesn't ever resolve the issue. Just because we don't realize that food has a huge relation to how our body feels, and the way that our body reacts to it interferes with how we think. And what about things like lentils mm-hmm. and beans? What about? I've heard uh, even people that I know who are heavily into plant-based uh, nutritional diet, some of them challenge the, the benefits of even lentils and even things like beans. Yeah. Just wanted to see your take on it. They're great food. Yeah. It's all about preparation. If you're, if you're in Africa, if you're in South America, for instance, if you see how they prepare their food before they eat it, they would soak those beans or any legumes for 48 hours, 72 hours. Is that like activating it? That's called activation. Yeah. <coughs> Same thing you're supposed to do with your nuts. You're yeah. supposed to activate your nuts before you eat them. You're not supposed to eat them raw like that. Yeah. And if you're not activating them, then you're not releasing the phytic acid, you're not releasing the lectin. So your body can't, your body, it blocks your body from absorb, absorbing certain minerals that your body would like to have, you know? For, 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 for good health reasons. A lot of people get canned beans, <coughs> for the water of the beans, everything in it, and that's how they eat it. And that's why they say that, that little rhyme, beans, beans, maggots, the more you eat, the more you toot, blah, 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 the more you toot, the better you feel. The reason why they're feeling bloated is because their body can't digest this food properly, because they have indigestive enzymes to block your body from breaking it down properly. Right. And then you've got the, the combination of food and what you're eating those beans with, that's going to affect your body as well. Even rice, you're supposed to soak your rice, you're supposed to soak your quinoa, you're supposed to soak your grains. All of them need to be soaked to release or to activate it before you consume it. Yeah, so like even like things like pumpkin seeds and stuff like that, are they any good? They are good for you, but yeah. again, activation always works better. But also, if you're going to have small seeds, for instance, they're supposed to be ground but you're supposed to ground it, not buy it ground already, because you don't know how long it's been out. A lot of seeds, like chia seeds, and omega, um, which are high in omega-3, flat seeds, hemp seeds, they're light and heat sensitive. So once you're exposed to oxygen, they oxidize. Then it loses nutritional benefit. So when you're, buying, yeah, when you're buying them ground already, and you don't know how long they've been grounded for, then you're, you're, yeah, you're having it, but it's predominantly gonna be waste. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because I, I have a lot of chai seeds. They're kept in a dark cupboard. Yeah. But obviously the transportation of them, I don't know what's exactly yeah, but happened. The majority of the time, those seeds are already whole. So you can have chia seeds soaked in like, I don't know, almond milk, coconut milk, whatever. And it can absorb 15% of its own body weight. And that allows, because it absorbs the water into it, it allows your body to break it down. Yeah. But without it, when people see people sprinkling <laughs> on top of their on top of their like smoothie bowls. It looks pretty, but they're shitting it right up. Like it's passing right through their system. And yeah, it's, it's great that it's passing right through their system. Yeah. It's because if we were not living in a concrete jungle, then those seeds would then germinate and grow into reproduce, provide more food for people. Right. Like it does in nature. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, you gonna try some of this stuff? Yeah. So um, I'm gonna change the subject slightly, only because it's something I experienced recently. For my 
other half's birthday, I took her to the Bulgari Hotel. Yeah. Went for a meal after. But during there, we had treatments. We had a massage and then we had facials. And during the facial, I, I knew this anyway, but I had dry patches here mm. and right here. And she picked them up, she identified them. Lovely, eh? And um, she said right at the end, she said, right, you, you dry here, dry there, which I knew anyway. Mm. And she said, right, you should, I'm gonna recommend these products. And me just being a little bit more aware about certain things now, mm. I'm thinking, okay, but what are, what are these products got, got in it? I mean, are they natural? Mm -hmm. You know, are they harmful? Are they full of chemicals? So the question I wanted to ask you is, if I do, I, I know it probably starts with the foods I'm eating, but let's just say you have dry patches on your face and stuff like that. What are good things to eat? Or oh, sorry, what are good things to put on your, your face? Like almond butter, coconut butter. Can you do that, rub it into your skin? Hmm. I think always the first thing you need to question is what's causing it. Yeah. If there's dry patches on your face, we need to talk about, we need to think about how well are you staying hydrated? That's number one. What am I putting in my body that can cause dehydration? Or which organ is affected to have me breaking out? A lot of the times, when people have breakouts, it's normally due to stress. Stress plays a huge role. Someone could just be have their mind overly concerned and occupied by work and having their targets met, uh, met <coughs> and break out and have hives. That's stress, that's anxiety. How are you controlling that? You know? So sometimes it's not about how can we solve the outside because what's going on is happening in the inside. Yeah. So if I was speaking to someone having a consultation like with you off camera and we were over the phone or in person, I'll get more into detail about your day-to-day -day life. Like, what's, is there any issues that you're having? Then I'll break down what it is that you're having throughout the day. I'll shoot to have a, write down a food journal because then I'll be able to see what it is that you're having throughout the, throughout the weeks, from week one to week three. And I'll be able to tell you, okay, well, this is what you're missing from your diet. Mm. Mm. But having a breakout, unless I've seen it as well, would be hard for me to just say, okay, well, it's that. I could give you a generic answer, but that's basically my generic answer until I'm actually working with your situation as an individual tailored to your, your benefit. So is that what you do as well? Like you, um, that's how part of your business as well, is yeah. not just training, but also finding out where people's weak areas are, so to speak, yeah. and addressing them and fixing them. Yeah, otherwise you'll be taking different creams or whatever for the rest of your life. I mean, the best type of creams is like sheer butter, amazing cream, you know? But also, it's not even about, you put that aside, what you're washing your skin with. Uh, no, no, I really wanted to ask you about this <laughs> because uh, more so for my family, uh, as you well know, I've got a, uh, a baby boy who's turned one at the start of the month. Yeah. And his well-being and his future is so important to me, quite naturally. Yeah. But I'm thinking about it more and more and more all the time because whatever I do, he's going to follow. Mm -hmm. Quite natural, they're going to mm -hmm. get, get influenced. And then sometimes when I'm washing him and there's certain soaps, I'm thinking, okay, it might say baby... Um, friendly or mm -hmm. uh, extra you know sensitive skin you know whatever yeah but I'm thinking how actually good is it for him to be rubbing radox on him for example yeah um, so a bit about that so like I've heard like within like 15 seconds the soap will pass through the skin into the bloodstream and things like that why did I take a bite just then because <laughs> <laughs> the food's that good um, My daughter's too. She's probably had soap in her skin like three times. For children, for babies, more importantly, 
remember you've got your gut flora which has a level of strength or weakness due to the passing down from their mother's gut health that gets passed on to the child's gut health there's certain foods that can knock out the diversity of their bacteria in their gut but then there's also skin flora which means you have bacteria that resides in your skin which you want to be you want to remain intact I don't know how long we're just going to carry on washing our door because I just wash my door with just an organic cotton cloth we have a double filtration system in our shower so it eliminates all of the hard water from it and makes it completely soft and we just wipe her down so it's just wa wa uh, water and then just wipe her down yeah I think we've used soap I know I've used soap with her once and um, that was in her hair she had so much um, sand in it I haven't even gone into reading what they're going to put in in the, the shampoo although it's going to say baby friendly we've got like baby johnson's for instance if you read their ingredients it's unbelievable it's like so toxic we have african black soap which is all natural i, I use that for myself I haven't used it on my daughter yet so I haven't even gone into the research of everything that gets put into a baby soap. I don't know if this is a silly question, but uh, you said African black soap. Yeah. Could I use it? Yeah, for of example. Could. Yeah. African. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just—is that just a brand name? No, it's not a brand name. It's, well, yeah, kind of, but it's just where it's from, you know. And um, where would I get that from? Any African or Caribbean shop. Go oh. into a market and you see a shop that's asking you've got any um, black soap. And it's just. Um, Completely it's just pure. organic. Yeah. So what, what's it made out of? Obviously Plum. plants. Yeah. So you use that and you just feel completely different. You, your body doesn't feel so dry. You know when you wash your hands with soap and your skin just yeah, dries horrible. up. Yeah, what's that doing? Pulling out all the moisture. It's not good for you. It's like if I do dishes and I'll keep putting soap in and I'm washing dishes, after my hand just stays dry for like two it's days. It's, it's, it's disgusting, yeah. yeah. So imagine doing that all the time, like yeah. every day. I know plenty of people that's gone white black male female stop washing their hair with soap maybe it's black soap maybe there's nothing just a lot of water and probably if they did use soap it might be once a week once a fortnight the length and the health that you see within their hair and their growth completely different Mad. Madness. you're washing out all of the essential oils that your body naturally produces for protection because um, again, uh, I've only got small bits of sound bites of information, but people who which are one's like, your favourite cheese, by the way? Huh? Which one's your favourite cheese? It's hard, you know, but I think the middle one. Yeah. Is it got like? It seems like know. it's got I, a bit of a truffle in there, you know. I'm gonna go back to this one. We need they're to ask. Both are. They're all very, very good. Um, <clears throat> is it like people who are who have got a turban? Mm. Is that from Hindus? Muslim? I don't know, but I don't want to call it and be wrong. Yeah, me, me neither. Um, but I know people that wear turbans. Mm. After a certain amount of time, your hair washes itself because of the oils. So I guess if you're keeping shampoo in it, mm. it doesn't give it a chance to clean itself. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's crazy how we're conditioned to believe that one thing is right, but actually, when you start looking at your body's consuming stuff, not mm. just from putting it in your mouth, but actually through the skin and through your hair, you can actually now start to see why so many people get problems. Mm -hmm. Skin infections and even the real serious stuff. The cosmetic industry is making a killing. Because, I mean, look at um, one of the Kardashians, the youngest one, one of the youngest ones, she's just turned into a billionaire from cosmetics. <laughs> Obviously, they're never going to want that, want that to stop, are they? No. But what's funny is we eat a particular way. Our body produces, let's say you eat a lot of meat, right? The bacteria in your, in your body breaks down carnitine or L-carnitine <coughs> and it produces trimethylamine, yeah. right? Your liver converts that 
turns into trimethylamine oxide. Have you ever smelled rotten fish? Well, I don't know, but I just know that the typical smell would be stinking. Yeah, that's what's happening inside of your body. <clears throat> so generally, a lot of people, I'm not talking about that's wash yourself with all of this fancy soap with all of this additional fragrances, just more additional chemicals in the soaps. Their natural body smell doesn't smell nice. There's a certain, a lot of people that just don't smell nice because they have all this rotten flesh inside of their gut. And this smell, you can smell on fish that's going off or even meat that's going off. And then you start to, when you, when you perspire, you start to smell like that, when it, you start sweating. Now, people eat a poor diet, they want to block that smell from coming out, so what do they then do? Go and get deter detergent. I'm deodorant. Deodorant. Links. Roll on, spray or roll on, try and block as much as their pores from allowing that smell to seep out of their skin. If it's supposed to be leaving your body, to remember our skin's an organ to eliminate waste from it. What can't be eliminated from our breath, from our, our, our colon, or from our urine, gets eliminated from our skin, right? So they're blocking it, keeping it in, and the companies that's producing it is like, yeah, well, this is what you need. You need something stronger for you. You need this, you need that. And it's just like, actually, you know what? When you start cleaning up your diet, you don't even need those things anymore. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, actually, I don't smell bad. My fast don't smell bad. When I go to the toilet, it's easy for me to go to the toilet. My body doesn't feel like it has to eliminate that type of waste, so your body just naturally doesn't smell anymore. But that industry is making a cake of it. Same thing, if you start breaking out, you need more makeup. Oh, cover it up, cover it up, cover it up. You smell bad, more, more fragrance, spray this on you. Like, do you, I mean, like, and I fully get that, but, I, love, I wear um, an aftershave called Mancera and I wear it just because I fucking love the smell. Yeah. I actually love it. I'm not trying to cover anything up. I don't think I smell as a human, but... Maybe I'm wrong. But um, <laughs> I love the smell. Do, mm. do you like... Is it alright for me to wear aftershave just a little bit? Fine. Yeah, do you, wear, do you ever wear aftershave? If I do, I spray it on my clothes, not on my skin. Okay. Because a lot of them are made from alcohol. So when it's made from alcohol and it's not oil based, it's alcohol based, it goes into your bloodstream. Right. And that's obviously bad. It's not the one. Whereas, yeah. of course, for it's really spray, 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 spray all around your neck. So I forget the water when you're ready. Oh, yeah, cheers. No problem. This uh, food is really good. Very good. And I like the fact that what you said is this they're seasonal. I order uh, fruit and some veg uh, from, and this is me trying to evolve and adapt, mm. from a river ford. Are you familiar with them? Mm. They're like a, a farm and they, they're a farm and distributor. And um, I think they're actually, thank you. thank you very much. They're based in, um, I want to say Devon somewhere, Cornwall. Yeah. But they only produce, oh, no, you can get different packages, but th there's one where it's only seasonal. Mm. And the good thing about it is so they send you a box and you've got to make do with whatever they send you. So you've yeah. got to make your food or your recipes yeah. to whatever they send. Yeah. And I like that because yeah. rather than you going, oh, I want this all the time. Mm. No, you actually follow the season. Is, is that really important for your body to consume seasonal stuff? And why is that? Do you know, because your body's adapting to the times, right? Right. But it also it puts your body in a state of confusion of what's going on. But also, do you know what? It's, it's, it's a tricky question. That's a tricky question. <clears throat> because in all honesty, your body knows where it is when you stay grounded. What I mean by grounded is when you walk around barefoot. Okay. You allow your body to connect to the electrical magnetic field that comes from the earth. So that for instance, if I go on holiday, when I come back, the very next morning, I'm out in the morning on the grass, barefoot. Just to give my body, let my body know exactly where I am. So it can adapt the circadian rhythm and keep it in sync with where I am located on the earth. For some people they might think that's cuckoo. 
Well, I, I, I had a conversation <laughs> with a friend of mine who, because um, I believe in that 100%, I read it in Headstrong from David Esprit. He said, you don't suffer from jet lag, you suffer from not being earthed. Yeah. So when you land somewhere, let's say you go from London to wherever, LA, yeah. one of the first things you should do, get outside, get into the park, yeah. barefooted, and maybe do some yoga. Yeah. And you'll find that your energy levels come back and they become neutralized. Synced. Yeah, yeah synced. Um, but then a friend of mine as well also said that, bit of a conspiracy thing, but I also kind of slightly believe in it. Converse, rubber soles, you know, you're, you're less connected to the ground. Not less, you're just not connected. Yeah, and Concrete. therefore, therefore you're out of... Um, you're out of sync. Out of sync. And that's why, that's leading back to your question, do you think you should eat seasonally? Well, I don't feel like a majority of the time our body doesn't even know where we are. We're walking on concrete all the time. We're taking flights here and there. We're barefoot on the beach. That's it. Back to trainers, back on a flight, back home, taking people five, six days to adjust. So like if you're, if like someone's fortunate, I've got a garden for example, yeah. real grass, just obviously you can't all the time, but when you can, get out there and just be barefooted on the grass. Be barefooted, be present. Eat outdoors, eat with a family. Take we your, don't do enough of that. Take yourself away from technology, you know, and uh, I feel a bit rich, rich saying it because I'm always on my phone because businesses and want to be connected yeah. and find the next thing. Yeah. But I do get it, you know, you need to be with one with nature almost and be, yeah, just, just be out in the elements. As much as you can, <clears throat> literally as much as you can. Like even for myself, being on my phone all the time, a lot of my work is done over the phone. Sometimes I don't want to be on a laptop because I can just get things done quicker on my phone, but I have no notifications on my phone. So if I have my phone upwards like this, unless someone says the only thing now can ever give me a notification, that even now I've got um, um, <coughs> a screen protector, but it's also, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Why do I have a mind block? Um, private screen. Can you see my screen right now? No. Yeah, so like, hold on. Can you see it now? It's blurred, it's not very clear. But. Yeah, so a lot of people get alerts. Unless I show you my screen like that, yeah. you can see there's a text message. That, people don't send text messages. My wife sends me a text message. So I know if I'm gonna get a message, it'll be from her. WhatsApp, Instagram, everything else, no alerts. Unless I go into it. And it just allows you to just stay that little bit further away from your that connection from your phone because mm. at all times if it keeps flashing up oh likes likes like this one comments that you're just consumed and that's the problem we're so consumed in in this electrical magnetic field coming from these devices rather than from the earth and, and these things as well do have a harmful effect not just on your uh, mental state but your physical because if you're around this sort of stuff all the time you're going to get problems as well long term I mean this is the whole issue with 5G yeah I heard like in LA haven't they like seen proof that it, it burns through stuff <laughs> 5G is making a bark from trees just fall off half a tree because it could 5G works on short waves it's much more condensed so there's more you'll find it you'll find more um, 5G um, um, towers than you would do 3 or 4G because they're still long waves. This this condensed electromagnetic field that these waves are <coughs> causing birds to drop out of the sky. Why, why are they doing it? Because people's demand, we want faster, we want quick, we want this, we want that. If we all said we didn't want any involvement in it, they wouldn't do it. If we all said we're not going to consume buying these televisions for 5k, what do you think will happen to that industry? They'll have to reduce their prices. It will drop down to like 500 and if everyone said, okay, we'll pay 500 for it, but then that would be the case. It's just a bit crazy that knowing that it's causing long-term side effects and problems, but we just want the faster internet. Well, look at Apple, for instance. They've got so many lawsuits against them that they slid a term and condition into their, um, they slid a new um, um, legislation into their terms and conditions to say in, that at all times the phone should be kept at least 10 millimeters away from the body, from skin. Because so many people are getting um, tumors in the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, no. 
What about things like AirPods though? Does that like, protect you a bit more? I don't think so. I talk on the phone, I have it on loudspeaker. If I've got my Beats headphones in, I've got the plug, the wire in, I just keep it old school. I just keep it old school. But when we're walking around, we're here, this place has got Wi-Fi. You're constantly in it. You're constantly like, remember we're electrical people. So you gotta think the way that our neurotransmitters function, the way that our nervous system functions, all functions from electrical charge, electrical impulses. Yeah. But now our body's doing way, it's doing, it's overactive. And I feel like it's more devastating for children than it is for, for adults. There's actually studies that show how much of an effect it has on a baby than it does to an adult. I think it's like 75% in comparison to like 15% to an adult. I because mean, they contain more water in their body yeah. than we do as adults. What, what, are, what is the statistic on a baby, the amount of water they've got in, it, in them? 85%? I think it's, I think, I think by the time we, I think it's like anywhere between 80 and 70 percent. By the time you're an adult, it can drop from 70 to 63 or 62 percent. And then once you die, it's 50 percent or less. That's what I heard. I really, I haven't through uh, through it. Ruben Tavares, who was on my, on my yeah. podcast. I don't know how accurate it is, but it made a lot of sense. Yeah. You're constantly fighting dehydration, so that's yeah. why you got to stay hydrated all the time. Mm -hmm. And it supports what you say that people people just don't realise they're not hydrated and they're getting the headaches, they're yeah. feeling lethargic, and they're feeling down. Well, the thing is, our body <clears throat> our body utilises 2.5 liters of water a day just to be active, right? So you can sit here all day, and your body is going to let that go for your urine, for your colon, for your lungs, um, for your kidneys. That that's what's happening now. If you're drinking 1.5 litres of water a day, you're eating heavy foods, you're eating dry foods, biscuits, whatever it is, cakes, blah, blah, blah. What's, what, what's your body under? Under stress. And you're doing that daily, yeah. yearly, uh, over a decade. And you're wondering, oh, how, why is, why am I having a breakout here? Why is this happening to me? Serious dehydration. A lot of people can solve their issue, resolve their issue through just hydrating their body. That's reducing the amount of food that they eat and drink more water. And distilled water. Distilled water too. Uh, why, why is it, that's all you drink, yeah? Why is that so important? If I'm in London, I, I stick to distilled water because I have control of how much water I can carry in my car, how much water I'm going to drink before I leave the house or whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter, I'm always going to be able to get home and have my own water, right? When I'm on holiday, I just have to settle with what I can get what's best for me. Whether it's coconut water or a branded glass spring water. It's the only thing I can do. It's the best I can do. Yeah. So you wouldn't right now have like this no. Harrogate night water? I feel like I'm hydrated enough for the amount of yeah. water I've had already today. I probably had like 3.5 litres of water. I've already had a litre of a smoothie. I think I'm good. When I go back home, I'll probably have some more water, a little bit more, and then I'll go to bed. Because because uh, we spoke about fasting, which I'm going to yeah. definitely do, and I want to go... Are you not eating this? Go on, yeah, crack on. Um, go on your pro programme or your WhatsApp group. So starting next year, I'm going to do it. Um, I feel like it will help me towards preparing for my fight. Mm. And also, I feel like it will just be a great challenge, a great test for me. Mm. But in one hand, we're saying you've got to you know, drink all this water. Next thing, you're talking, you talk, spoke to me about dry fasting for like <laughs> four days or something, yeah. and then almost not eating one single thing for mm. like a week. It, it's almost like it sounds a bit conflicting, but I know you mm. well enough now that there's going to be some massive logic behind <laughs> why you've done it. Dry fasting is three times as strong as water fasting. The reason being is because by the time you reach the day two of a dry fast, it's equivalent to three days of water fasting. So what your body's doing is, now that you're not taking in water, your body's breaking down your fat and utilizing the hydrogen from your fat and the oxygen that you're breathing in to produce its own water. That's what the body's doing. So you have, one minute you have a dry mouth, and it happens all the time. <coughs> have you ever had a dry mouth and then all of a sudden you just got fluid in your mouth again? 
think about it. Maybe it might happen a later on in yeah. later on in time. You might be training this once or more. Mm. You don't you didn't bring you with you. It's that fucking to the camera. Yeah. All of a sudden, you feel actually I'm all right. Actually, I don't yeah. really need it right now. I can, yeah. I, can, I, can, I can do with some, but you don't really need it at the moment because your body's already started producing its own water to prevent itself from going into a devastating dehydrated state. But for my myself, because of how hydrated I am, because of my high, my diet is is based on a high concentration of water within my food. I don't suffer the symptoms that someone else would do when they haven't drunk any water for four or five hours, if they were fasting. Okay. And I can't imagine you just jump from, you know, you made this transition from westernized diet now to raw plant, plant-based diet. Yeah. Fasting, then to dry fasting. What, yeah. how, 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 what did you do? And how did you discover that? Because plant-based, yeah. I get it, and I do get fasting, but how did you come up with the idea or the want to do the fasting? I think you know, there was a seed planted years ago before I was even, cons- I think I must have been about 17 or 18 when I saw a documentary in this guy that only ate three days out of the week. And the rest of the week he just drank water. And I was like, what kind of madness is this? Yeah. And he said, like, this is my shopping for the week. And it was like, literally nothing. Was he vegan? I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even remember. Maybe I can find it online. But um, that kind of stuck with me. And I always wondered, like, how did he manage that? And then later on, I don't know what it was. I don't know what the trigger point was again for me to start wanting to walk fast again. Um, me and my me and my missus spoke about it. Then she decided to do a coconut water fast, and she did it for five days. And I was like, I'm gonna do it again. And then shortly afterwards, I did my fast, and I did 11 days. I think I once saw a post that you made. I'm just interjecting as you're saying so because I remember uh, watermelon coconut. It was a secret that you released. Yeah. And that, is that what you're referring to when you've done a fast with that? No, no, no. My missus did a just straight wa- okay. coconut water fast, coconut water fast, and. Um, I was like, yeah, I just want to do it. I just want to do it, go all the way. I want to go water fast. And there, was not, there wasn't anything out there online for me to really look up and research to find out how's the best way to do it. Actually, I'm glad I didn't, because the information that's out there now, I'm like, no, nah, that's not. Like people were claiming they're water fasting, were drinking coffee near nuts. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> I don't know, but. Yeah, it was just a journey. I felt like there's more to it. There's levels to to gaining or optimizing your health. And that's just one of them. And then me following into a dry fast, I just wanted to really push the limits, push my body and see what what more can my body handle. Let me let me break the the, the, the common taboos that's out there that, which claim that if you go longer than three days that you'll die and etc. etc. Same thing with water fasting, seven days without food you're more or less going to die. So, so, so the, 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 the science and the reason why you do it is you pull bad toxins that you might have been exposed to mm. from your cells, from your tissue, mm-hmm. due to a water or what you say is a, a dry fast. Is dry fasting what? is more in depth. It's because it starts to go into your cells and it starts to pull water out from your cells. So our cells in total are carries about 28 litres of water. So even without any water, when you get that deep into your dry fast, you've yeah. still got that much water left. So I know that it's not gonna, it's gonna be a long way away before something damaging happens to me. But if you're coming from a state of dehydration and then try and, de- try and do a dry fast, you're gonna cause significant damage to your body. So where I've been water fasting for the past three years, almost three years now yeah three years now I haven't I've probably fasted almost 300 I think 330 days out of the three years I haven't had any food so I've had a lot of experience water fasting where someone else would hear me saying oh dry fast well yeah I want to do that and the reason why I don't like to speak about it is because this it's a progressional thing it's it, it it's not something you jump straight into. Yeah. It's like being an athlete. You wouldn't, uh, boxing for example, 
you go do a bit of training, you hit a couple of bags, you do a bit of pad work, you do a bit of sparring, you might have an amateur fight, and then you might go to a pro fight later on. I think if you dive straight in now, you're probably gonna get yourself hurt. Yeah. You're gonna regret doing it. Yeah. Same sort of principle. Um, look, you're very clean eating, but is there ever a time where Coop just sort of says, oh, I'm gonna let my hair down a little bit, I'm gonna have like a bit of vegan junk food, for example, or never? Sugars? Um, what do you, when you say sugars, what do you... I don't know, you know, like, there might be like a vegan chocolate bar, for example. <laughs> I know you mentioned about when you was at the Notting Hill Carnival, you had a glass of yeah. organic. Biodynamic wine. By the other set. Situations like that. Yeah, um, not often. I think for me, like, super tail fries is like, ooh, or, <coughs> if I went to like Biff's Jack Shack and got one of his jackfruit burgers, it's like deep fried. Like, but my balance of health is up here. So when I play around with stuff like that, it's absolutely nothing to me. I don't feel like, I don't even feel the weight or the, what other people will feel because I'm not, I'm not at a balance. I'm at a tipping point of health. So I'm all the way in this angle rather than rather than a balanced angle where anything that I eat, I can feel a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I mean, if I eat something bad that's not good for me, my stomach could let me know straight away, ease off of that. My stomach, my body speaks very loud to the point that my mind doesn't try to override what it says. And I think with me and you spoke about it a little bit earlier, it's like our bodies tell us when there's something wrong. Our body is our doctor, but our mind tries to override it. So if you're feeling bloated and you feel like you can't eat the food, don't go ahead and eat the food because your mind's like, that, that bread tastes great. Or that cake tastes amazing and just have some more. It's not going to make you feel any better. It's the addiction. It's lack of control. And when you start water fasting, you gain that control back. You gain the control of, of willpower. Because then your body's like, actually, I'm not hungry now. You don't need this. And you can hear it louder. And it also is like a spiritual connection. It's an emotional cleanser. People think about water fasting, they only think, well, I'm just gonna abstain from food. But really, when you're water fasting, you're abstaining from negative energy. People that wanna drain that energy from you. People that wanna purge their energy from themselves onto you. Yeah. You're, you're avoiding, you're avoiding <coughs> escapism. Something that we always practice for by eating food, going out for a drink, socializing with your friends, anything to stay away from your own mind, your own mental state. A lot of people run away from these things, so it's just a practice of escapism. So what I tend to ask a lot of people is, how much time do you spend with yourself? Not being alone, I'm talking about how much time do you spend with yourself? Some people do 10 minute meditation, some people do 20 minute meditation, that's the longest that they'll spend with themselves. Do you ever spend time with yourself or you're not looking at your phone, not texting, not working, not listening to music, not watching television, not reading, that's when you're spending time by yourself, not talking to somebody else. No communication apart from yourself. Like you're in a chat. You're just in your zone. That's powerful. It's necessary. Because a paradise is a state of consciousness. I could take you to the most beautiful place on the earth. But if you're anxious and stressed, you ain't even gonna see it. You can't take him while yeah, I'm taking him. I mean, look how beautiful this is. You're like, yeah, but you don't appreciate it. Yeah. You can't. You have you're blocked. You're emotionally blocked. So when you do water fasting, for some people they'll break out into tears. They don't know why. Some people will remember things that they've never thought of or ever even knew that they had any memory of because cells contain memory. Cells contain trauma. And they pass that on. They pass that information on to another cell before they perish. So someone like yourself, you may be a boxer, you may have, or someone that does plays football, they may have an old knee injury from back when they was 14 years old. They were water fast, they're like, my knee's throbbing. I'm like, ride that out, it's gonna take about two to three days, it's gonna be gone. And you'll have full mobility of that knee again. It's incredible, man. So if I were to do a water fast for the first time, what would I do and how would I, ex what, what things can I expect and challenges? 
I think the things that you can expect is simple <coughs> symptoms of addiction. The need to want to eat something, but that's not necessarily you, that's also hormones being produced, right? And that's also a calling that your body wants for sugar or glucose because our body's so used to resourcing it um, externally rather than producing it itself. So come 18 to 24 hours, you're going to be gagging for something. Yeah. If you sleep that off the following day, you're going to be like, oh, actually, I'm not even hungry. But during those, during those six hours, you're going to be like, why am I fasting for? You're going to question why you're doing it. And you're going to have to keep reminding yourself. And that's something that you could expect. Headaches is something that you could expect, depending on the type of foods that you eat, the type of medication you've been on throughout your, your history in your life. Um, Removal, like nausea, coughing up phlegm, blowing your nose, removing mucus from your system. That's I another do that big all thing. The time as well. Yeah, then you that would uh, during your fast, you'll be able to take the deepest breath. You're literally able to take the deepest breath through your nose. I'm always clearing my um, my throat. Yeah, and I'm always cleaning this nostril. Yeah, because um, I can't breathe up this side. But yeah. if I do this, I can. It's curved inside, so it means that. It's inefficient the breathing system here. Yeah. And this side always gets blocked. And then also my throat. Yeah. And I'm always constantly going <clears throat> like Yeah, that. yeah. I can't help it. So annoying. So that would go. So I need to I need You'll to get You'll feel great. You'll be like, oh, wow, I'm really taking an oxygen. Yeah. And then come day five or day four, even depending on everybody's different, high levels of ketones being produced from the breakdown of your fat through your the liver converts into ketones, provides your your brain, your heart and your liver. I mean, rain your heart and your lungs <coughs> um, with a new source of energy. You feel, you feel like you're on cloud nine. Super clear minded, like clear thinking, sharp, just on the ball. I'm definitely going to do it. Um, I would love to order a bit more food and, uh, and, and, and eat. I want to ask you one more thing. So, like, you know, like, I, I'm in business, right? Yeah. And you're taught in business, or everybody knows who's in business, who's any good at business. Mm -hmm. You should look at your company mm. and look at the weaknesses. Because if you can always adapt and fix your weaknesses, mm. then the company's going to grow, it's going to evolve, and it's going to become bigger and bigger and bigger and more successful. But yet, so many people don't get that concept when it comes down to your body. Yeah. And they'll do things, oh, I've always done it, so that's right. Or my mum and dad told me to do it, so it's right. And there isn't enough people challenging what they used to do before when it comes down to wellness and health and nutrition mm. especially. And that's, I mean, even when I got my dad to watch Game Changers, right? Yeah. And there's so much stuff that he accepted as, yeah, that's right. And then later on that day, he had a microwaved, um, what do you call it, ready meal, mm -hmm. spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, Dad, like, it's almost like madness. <laughs> like, you're, you're, you're no, it's like heading towards a car crash mm. and just going, ah, oh, I don't know. Yeah. It's mad. If I make it, I make it. <laughs> it's mad. And I don't know why, I don't know, I, I, it's probably not even a question, but I just, it's a bit frustrating. Yeah. And I know, like, I know if I have a, a beer, mm. glass of wine, if I do something I'm not meant to be doing, I don't dress it up as, yeah, it's all right. I just know, you know, I'm just doing it, and it is what it is, and mm. I know it's not, not good for me. Yeah. But so many people just, just are in denial of it all the time. I mean, you must come across a lot of people like that with, like, clients or, people that, I don't know. Conquest all the time. Conquest all the time, but also to the point where, I hope I don't come off judgmental. People say I don't. You don't. Because <coughs> I've come from <coughs> the lifestyle that most people are living. So if somebody's eating meat, it's funny, it's because they judge themselves. They look at me and they're like, oh, I know I shouldn't be eating this, but like, why are you looking at me? I don't care what you're doing, that's your life, right? Each to their own. If they ask me about what they should be eating or how can they better their health, then I'll tell them, 
I feel like, do your thing. If I weren't here, you wouldn't say anything, yeah. right? But it's that level of guilt. And people don't want to feel guilty about anything that they're doing. And if you challenge a person's beliefs, then it causes, it causes conflict, you know? And if you try to speak to them during that state of mind, no one takes <coughs> in that information. So yeah, someone can watch something like game, the Game Changers and be like, wow, that's, that's great. It's just not for me. I've been doing this for a long time. This is my habit, it's my routine. I'm just gonna stick to it. They may even become sick and still be like, the doctor's gonna fix this for me. It's just life. You see um, even like with people that suffer, like big smokers, they get cancer. Yeah. And then they just go back onto the cigarettes after they get better. Yeah. It is bonkers, isn't it? <laughs> but it just demonstrates that people don't actually do things for their best, to become the best version of themselves for the best, you know, from a well-being standpoint. Yeah. We're creatures of habit. habit. And we're creatures of doing the easier thing. But we are also creatures that have choice. Yeah. It's like, if a flock of birds is always going to go south, then that's the direction they're going to go. One of them is going to stop and be like, I'm going to go north. <laughs> it's not the time to go north. We're going south at this time of the year. Yeah. Whereas we're like, mm, well, I can go north, east, or west. Yeah. What's down there? I'm going to check it out. So like, we all have choice. But majority of the time, we just prefer to just stick to what we know. And we don't give ourselves the time to challenge any of the information that's given. Myself, my platform, my Instagram handle, people come in there and say, well, you haven't given us all of the, the full amount of information. I'm like, I'm just a gateway. I've used certain key words for you to utilize that when you're doing your search so that you can find the information I'm talking about. If I let, wrote a whole caption, I write short captions and people still don't read it. Mm. And still ask me questions with the answer inside of the caption. And I'm like, it just shows you the, the, the level in which some people function at. And they just, they're on this, uh, you've got five seconds to entertain me, max. And you want to get your point across, but also you want to you wanna be, you want to be, well-versed enough so that some people that's interested would read it enough to be like that's enough information for me to run off with that and find out the rest of that information and then others for them to just capture them and plant that seed just for the, before they hit that scroll button again right but like you said with the businesses what's the weak points how can we evolve that's how i feel about myself how can i better myself how can i better my body there's no point in me reading stuff and then saying, well, I, you should try this and you should try that and telling other people to do it. Why don't I do it myself? Yeah. And you have a lot of people in any industry, whether they're a doctor, nutrition, dietitian, whatever it is, right? PT. Once they got that certificate, they're like, I know everything. Nothing else to learn. I'm like, that's, such, that's the wrong way about it. I'm learning shit every day or every week mm. and it's not about it's not just about learning things it's about applying it to your life of course when you're not applying it to your life there's no action then how can you how can you teach so it's a waste of time if you're learning it and um i think i listened to uh it might have actually been on the podcast with you about yeah like people give advice about certain diets but they don't even follow it themselves like these PTs or nutritionists yeah. and stuff I mean you even see doctors they're quite known for smoke, being smokers How many doctors have you walked into the room that you've ever seen that just look healthy? Now that I've asked you this question if you haven't thought about it when you next go to the hospital just look at the people that work there and how many of those people are healthy do you think? A lot of them well overweight there's a lot going on. I don't want to, because it sounds like I'm just past the judge, but at the end of the day, I know a person when they're sick. I could look at their skin complexion and know that they're sick. I could look at their, their eyes and know where they're sick, you know? I could tell by their hair. I could tell by the, 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 the health of their nails, if they're healthy or not. But that's what I've gathered from my work. I've taken my, I've taken a step, I've taken my work that step further, all those steps further, yeah. so that, I sometimes have to switch off and be like, mm, just turn off. Don't ignore that, you know? But 
these are people that's supposed to be helping you. And if they're not helping themselves, how are they going to teach you health? How? You go into a hospital and in the hospital they're feeding you all these microwave foods. I'm supposed to be getting healthy in a hospital. Why are you giving me food that will make me more sick? Concentrated fruit juices. Unbelievable. They're, they're doing it in schools. I'm so glad they're starting to slowly work on school, school meals now. And um, we're obviously looking at schools now for Mason, my son. But there's loads of schools you go to and they still give out cartons of milk for like... Because it's going to make your bones strong. Yeah, calcium. And you're realising now it's bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Of course it is. And I'm just like, if he ever went to his school, do he would never ever consume that. Yeah. The last time, last time we spoke about it, the, the pus in there and the blood particles and all kinds of stuff. Funny enough, is a lot of people are lactose intolerant. I think Asians are the most lactose intolerant when it comes to, to dairy. And recently, a lot of them are coming type one diabetics because they've been mixing with the Western and Western diet and consuming dairy products at a lot at a very early age, um, which is interfering and dam and causing their body to produce antibodies, which actually start to affect and destroy their beta cells in the pancreas which produces insulin in the first place. So there's huge studies coming out about this now. But then you have African Americans which are like 73, 72 to 73 percent lactose intolerant. And then you have the South Americans which are 50 to 53 percent lactose intolerant. And also then you have Native Americans as well that are roughly around the same. And then you have Caucasians, Europeans who are only 33% and it's funny because because they've been consuming it the most their body has adapted the most to it. Now the thing is when they talk about coughs at like baby cows, baby cows have an enzyme which breaks down the lactose yeah which is the sugars and it's called lactase after two years or so, the baby calves stop producing this because they don't need to consume milk anymore. We don't produce it. So when we're consuming it, this is what's causing so much damage to our body because we don't produce lactase. Over time, our body's been able to slowly adapt to be able to handle it better. And for Africans, they've been able to handle it a little bit better because of the mixing with Caucasians or Europeans. And this study that came out only recently it's just like starting to make much more sense why so many people are suffering from it and why some others aren't suffering from it so much but yeah it's just giving children something that, that they're claiming you get calcium from which cows get calcium from by eating their greens it's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous but it's all about marketing cow's milk contains calcium but by the time the animal protein is broken down in the body, it produces as a byproduct a lot of acid. And the calcium, which is alkaline, is the first thing to try and negate that acid and alkaline balance. But because there's more um, protein, animal protein, then there is calcium, it completely wipes out the calcium and then it leaches alkaline minerals from the body to try and negate the acid and alkaline balance within the body. And this is why those people that consume the most amount of dairies in certain countries have the most amount of hip fractures or osteoporosis. Mind blowing stuff bro. <laughs> um, all right, well, there's a lot for me to, to think about there. Um, I'd love to order a couple, couple more dishes that you recommend. And then, um, yeah. I think we should just go halves on both for the truffle, the truffle mo Let's um, do that mushroom. then, bro. Cool. Do you know what the one chef that just had his jacket on, I saw his reflection. That's the guy I wanted to, to explain All what right. the food is. If we, um, I'm not too sure if we can get him over. Shall we order some food, please? Has Thank Antonio you. just left? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Are you doing? Like Are you eating? Yeah. But yeah, what can I get for you? There's three mains and there's three of us here, so shall we all get one of these mains? One of 
Yeah, yeah. get it. Just so you know, the Salero Risotto is now a Jerusalem Artichoke Risotto. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good, so just yeah. one of each way? Yes, please. Perfect. Is this all finished with? Will we still put yeah. it Yeah, all done. No, I'll, we'll keep this. Keep that oh, yeah, that's yeah. lovely. Side plates and do one of each main, yeah? Thank you. I need to get one of these screens because just like you said, I get so distracted because yeah. <laughs> it's always there and I'm yeah. feel, I feel, I get mini anxiety because the moment I see it, I'm like, I've got to respond. Yeah. Because that's like the business side of me, which yeah. is like, respond, 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 be yeah. efficient. But it's bad because yeah. it really does sometimes pull, pull me away from yeah. certain scenarios. So I'm definitely going to practice what you're saying and buy one of bloody screens. I'm, I'm, um, <clears throat> Speaking to Alfie, I was like, really happy to hear that he was, he listened to um, Jim Ron. Ron, yeah. And I was just like... He's great. Incredible. <laughs> and I remember being on holiday, or well, I was back in Florida with the missus and my daughter. And he's like, yeah, we're going to go to the... <laughs> exactly what you said, he's like, we're going to go to the beach. I was like, look, I'm going to shut down for a minute because I just need to just do a few things while I'm there. And then I'm going to come back. And on the way there, Jim says, don't bring your briefcase to the beach. <laughs> do your work in the office or do your work where work is meant to be done. And when you get home, that's when you're in your home time. That's when you're in your downtime, sure. basically. And you find that when you, now that we have these phones, we're constantly in work mode. It doesn't matter where we are. We could be on the train, we could be on the bus, we could be walking. Now like, literally we're walking and we're, messaging i'm driving messaging yeah like shut down you know what it's the only one thing which is a bit of a paradox and it's a bit of a um kind of sometimes necessary evil and um, i'm now so it sounds like i'm trying to justify it which i kind of am but entrepreneur right you want to become as far as empire money status is concerned and providing for your family mm -hmm. <clears throat> and also a bit of maybe ego mm. it's like you want to be, be the best you can be and part of that is sacrifice and the sacrifice is sometimes you've got to be like on it a lot certainly mm -hmm. in your early years I, I convert it back to a sports person a fighter you'll see a lot of fighters they sleep they breathe they train mm. they consume everything to do with fighting because they want to be the animal mm. to go in there and do their thing and entrepreneurs, I can see, kind of like that as well. And there is an argument to say that if they weren't like that, mm. they won't be, they wouldn't be the next Steve Jobs, the next Bill Gates, the next mm. Warren Buffett. Mm. Um, I don't know what my point was, but I'm just saying that I think... We're talking about when is it time to shut down from your work? And I, I just find it, if I'm at home and I feel like there's a business opportunity even at home and I can do it on my phone, I'm gonna, I wanna do it. Yeah hard one man it really is and I know I've got my baby boy there sometimes and I love him to pieces yeah but if there's a there's a and I feel there's a an opportunity where I just need to do a couple of little yeah. things I can't help it no I get it I get it because at home because I've worked with people abroad when is my downtime yeah to so sometimes <coughs> I just can't have the phone next to me because I know okay well people are on their break in, I don't know, let's say this person is like, oh, can we have our session at 6 p.m.? Or can I have our session at 7, 8 p.m.? Yeah. I'm like, 7, 8 p.m., like, because their lunch time is at 1 or 2 p.m., their time. It's like, you know? But that's because I give so much of myself to other people. But I do make sure I have those quality time to myself where I'll be driving, I won't be listening to any music. Yeah. I'll be in my own zone. I'll just get, be in my own thoughts. Yeah. Allow myself to just go inward, you know? Yeah. But again, how much time do you give yourself? Because that's it's the same thing that can run you down to the ground. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. And I do find myself not always in, in the moment. That's yeah. why I like doing a podcast, because you kind of, I force myself to be in the moment, but yeah. I can easily, if I was in another scenario, be like this, 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 yeah. and I'm trying to do so many things. Blessing the curse almost. Mm. Blessing is I'm quite active and I want to do stuff. The curse is 
find it sometimes very, very difficult to concentrate on one thing. Yeah. Um, something I'm definitely working on. Do, do you know, I, I wanted to ask this earlier, but I don't think we asked this last time. I'm curious what you do with like brushing your teeth. Random, mate. Eh? <laughs> so like, there's obviously fluoride toothpaste, which I come away from. Yeah. Fluoride free. There's obviously your pineal gland, it, you know, masks it or stops it working. Um, what, calcifies. What, calcifies it. Also, also, our diet does that, right? So what, um, what do you do for it? Oil pool, oil pool, which is use coconut oil because it has antimicrobial um, properties. So basically you just <coughs> have it in your mouth like five minutes or so and you just swish it around in your mouth and you see it just picks up all this white foam right. and you spit it out. Then I use coconut oil and charcoal sometimes or sodium bicarbonate because that helps to whiten your teeth. But the majority of the time, I just use plain coconut oil. So, so after I do my oil pulling, say I wake up in the morning, I grab my oil, put my mouth, swish it around, go to the toilet, do my other stuff, sort everything I need to sort out. Then, boom, brush my teeth, have my shower, blah, blah, blah. What, what about, I'm currently, I did get it out of Whole Foods, and it's like an aloe vera gel with yeah. no fluoride in it. I feel good I'm doing it. I've yeah. been doing it for some time now. But is that still crap, I think? Yeah. Or do you think I should convert right over to what you're doing? I mix it up, find out what's good yeah. for you. Like, the thing is, is I, I had two cavities, or I still have two small cavities, which used to be really big. And I must have been from my consumption of refined sugars. I never used to eat sweets, but I used to add sugar to everything. And my dentist said I needed to put fluoride on it, blah, blah, blah. And it's, that's the only thing that's going to stop it from getting bigger and bigger. And he said it will never heal. But since I changed my diet, since I've been water fasting, since I have been oil pulling and not using toothpaste, the two cavities that I have have actually gotten shrunken, gotten really small. To the point where my wife was like, why didn't you take a picture of it at the very beginning? But it's because it was never my it was never my aim to heal my teeth because no one ever said that you could your teeth couldn't heal. They always say that the um, enam enamel yeah. will never grow back. Yeah. And yeah, once you've made damage to your teeth it never happens. But yeah. you're saying that you that kind of you reverse it. Slowly it's getting it's almost there. Because it used to go across. Can you see up here? Uh-huh. And there? Yeah. One of them is just a little dot now. But they both just go across the whole tooth. If you can see, I don't know which one has turned into this adult one. It used to go all the way across there, and then all the way across there. And now one of them is just adult, and one of them has gotten smaller. And I'm like, hmm, okay. And then somebody just being curious sent me a, a, a YouTube link of this guy talking about how he's healed his teeth through fasting. And she was like, oh, did, can, is, do you know this to be true? And I was like, maybe it's the water fast I've, I've been doing. It's interesting. Maybe it's a combination of everything. Come 2021, will I have them here in my mouth anymore? I hope not. We'll see. <laughs> what's, um, what's your ultimate goal? as far as preserving your life is concerned. Because I think I touched on this before. Ruben, who is part of Mimboso, who I interviewed, said that the human body, providing that we're living right, organically, mm. through the way we live and consume things, mm. we should get to 140 years of age. Easy. Easy. What, what's, I've always said to myself, I've got to get past 100. Yeah. 100%. I haven't ever thought about it like that. All in my head, I've always, my goal is, when I reach 100, I won't be able to do 10 muscle ups. I want to do one muscle up now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's to live a healthy life. Yeah. I don't want to be decrepit. I don't want to be hunched over. I don't want to spend my last 10, 15 years or 20 years on medication and then bedridden. I go, I've been to Ghana, I've seen aunties, I've seen like family members. I've seen other people's family members, they're in their late 80s. They don't need help standing up. They have their teeth in their mouth. Like, they look well. There's no chance, you know, you could look at someone and be like, I hope you, I hope you make it to 
next yeah. year. I hope we make it tomorrow. Yeah, I I've hope we're still here next week. I've, I've had plenty of, even with my own nan who I lost, I think it was a year and a bit ago. And there was a point where you were like, I hope she makes it through this bit. Yeah. And um, you saw the human body, her body deteriorate. She was so switched on. And then a month later, she was like, the crazy. The opposite. And it's like, how did that happen? Like, yeah. how have you just, you know, and there's a lot of probably answers to it, but I do honestly think it's the degeneration of cells, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because again, every seven years, it's funny, it's because our, it takes a full seven year cycle for every single cell in our body to rejuvenate itself. So technically every seven years, we're like a seven year old boy again. So every seven year cycle, your body is going through, um, replica is replicating whatever damage that we're putting in our body. So we are becoming older and older. If we were living in a natural state, if we were still connected to the earth, we were still doing the things that we're, if we're living as part of the ecosystem, if we wasn't polluting the earth, our standards of living would be, would excel to levels that we wouldn't know. And it's so funny, it's because we keep using our life expectancy from 200 years ago. <laughs> 300 years, oh yeah, we wasn't living, 500 years ago, we wasn't living longer than 40 years, 30 years, 20. It's like, yeah, but look at the state in the earth, look at the state in which it was living in, the sewage that it was living in. And also, if you go back to ancient Africa, we had sewage systems. So, like, who's, when you talk about ancestors, this is the funny thing is when we start talking about ancestors, whose ancestors are we talking about? Yeah. We're talking about, we're talking about, oh, we were cavemen, who was cavemen? You know? When you start talking about, oh, well, we were meant to be eating such and such diet, I'm like, yeah, but from where in the earth was you living to say that we should be eating that? <laughs> so it is, it's quite funny to me, but there's a certain amount of information I've taken, there's certain information I'm just, that I'm not willing to accept because the, pe the people that it's coming from. I'm like, if you keep labeling me as it, or my ancestors as a caveman, why am I going to listen to that? But there was, yeah. when? Hunting an animal in certain parts of Africa may be needed for certain cultures, depending on the location of where they lived. For many others that live across the tropical band, they didn't have to worry about food because food came in abundance. Like, even vegetables, like when people say, well, oh, plants, they got feelings too. Plants do have feelings, flowers have feelings too, everything, right? The one food that is given to us is fruit. It's the one food that's given to us. You gotta think, fruit goes through its changes. It changes color to be more appealing to us because the first thing that we do is see the fruit. That color sends a signal from our brain down our vagus nerve, down to our gut. That bacteria has that chemical connection with our brain, symbolizes whether that food is something that our body, that our body needs. So bright colors like the, the, the reds, the yellows, the greens, it's more vibrant. That's why if you ever looked at a plate of fruit, like a fruit platter, and a plate of a meat platter, the first thing you're gonna see is the fruit platter before you see the meat plate. Bright, bold colors. Of course, that's the first attention to what if we want to consume something. Then of course you hence have the smell. Why, hence why they make things like Skittles multicolored. Yes. Because you're just, it's like the fruit, you just want to consume it. All desserts, right? It's just to, repli it's a, to replica fruit. Because our body naturally goes for colors, right? Now, then you, the second thing you have is the sense, right? The smell. The smell of it is going to cause you to salivate. You go, mm. I need to eat that, that taste, that smells delicious. That's also part of how our smell is the main reason why we taste the food the way that we taste it. Of course there's textures, but the actual taste comes from how well your airways are clear. So when you go do your water fast and you clear your airways, you clear your sinuses, your, the taste of food is gonna be incredible. If someone put salt in the mouth, too salty, 
It's too spicy and that's too much, right? But what's happening now is that you're invited by the fruit with the smell. And the last thing that happens with the fruit is it falls from the tree, it falls from the vine. It's given to you. It's the only food source that's given to us from the earth. And then once you finish eating the flesh, you discard the seed, that seed then grows or you consume the seed and it still germinates through your, your fecal matter and then it grows again. That's the cycle of life. Good stuff, so man. if I were to slice up some a, a pig, a cow, you're not going to sell it. Your mouth's not going to start watering. If I, first of all, if I kill the animal here and if you start hearing it screaming, you're going to be like, hmm, mm. you know? Then you've got to deal with the blood. Then you've got to deal with the, the animal shitting itself, as they always do. I might stop there because the food's here. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. This looks really I'll good. Slide this over. Yeah. All right. So I think this um, ended the podcast, and uh, we're just consuming the food. And thank you for your time again, bro. No problem, man. And uh, my saying is, be happy, never content. It's a All good right. saying. That's it. Yeah. All right. Cool. That's nice one. Just uh, finished part two with Coop DC. Second. Uh, podcast interview uh, um, but this is the first time we went to a vegan restaurant to uh, to interview a guest we went to a place called uh, Plant Hub I'm currently right now eating some plant-based uh, brownies which are fucking great and um, yeah very good interview Cooper's you know I don't even have to I don't even have to describe what he's like because if you listen to the first one or more importantly you listen to the Reggie H podcast called uh, Lentil Lovers where he's um, he's talking he's just one incredible, incredible man he knows so much stuff about wellness mindfulness and also nutrition he's definitely, he's definitely someone a very good person to have in the circle and I'm really honoured and uh, thankful that I, I can uh, I can speak to him now and you know he's becoming a bit of a friend um, I know you're going to get a lot of value from this and um, looking forward to uh, getting the feedback. The other exciting thing you said, um, I can interview his wife who's, who's very, very knowledgeable about uh, pregnancy, post-pregnancy and there's loads of stuff that she's um, very uh, knowledgeable about. So that's going to be coming next, hopefully maybe the next coming weeks. It is quarter past nine at, nine at night, I'm knackered, I'm tired, I'm cold and um, I need my bed, so be happy, never content. Speak to you soon.